Welcome back, Itsy Bitsers. Today we're making miniature butterfly and beetle boxes. I'm using my Cricut Maker 3, but you could use any other cutting device of your choice. We're using lots of different materials for this project and I'll pop a list in the description below. I'm going to start with the butterfly design, but you can skip ahead if you'd like to start with the beetle. In Cricut Design Space, head over to the Images tab and type the word butterfly. And you'll get a number of results that come up and we're looking for a silhouette image with an outline. I've opted for these 12 different designs so I can pick the one that I like. So we're going to select that one and then click Insert Images. They are quite large, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit and then I'm going to click ungroup, which will separate the butterflies from each other and I can pick which ones I want to use. Now I'm going to separate these into layers because I want some color poking through underneath and then the black over the top. So to do that, we click on the contour button on the right hand side and you'll see all of the layers appear here if I scroll all the way down. To create two layers, I'm going to duplicate my butterfly and then click on one of them, go over to contour, and then we're just gonna have the butterfly shape underneath. To keep those changes, we just click away from the screen and then I can change this to another color. Now, if I place the outline on top, so center front, and you can see it overlaid there and I'm going to use black vinyl for the top of the wings and then colored paper underneath. I've picked this one for our next design which I'm going to cut out of blue paper and black vinyl. So again, we're going to duplicate that butterfly shape and then hide all contours. So you've just got the outline selected, click off there and there's our outline. Now we want to change the color so that Cricut places it on a separate cutting mat and we know we're coloring that from colored paper and the black part we're cutting from vinyl. So for the last two designs I'm going to do three layers. So I've got this kind of plain butterfly shape here. I'm going to duplicate that shape, drag that over, click the contour button and highlight just the background. And then we're going to duplicate it again and this will be for our second layer and I want to hide everything but only select the wing area and you can see it looks like that and we're going to color that um, in a different color so we place it on a separate cutting mat and then I'm going to do that a third time but this time I'm going to do it for the dot areas so click contour and unselect everything except those two dots and I've colored that sort of an orange color, which I'll cut out from vinyl as well. I've then duplicated those two dots, um, but made them a little bit smaller and dragged them to the bottom there. So we've got a nice pattern happening. And same thing for our last design. We're gonna duplicate that shape, click contour. I'm gonna do three layers for this one. So we've got the background layer, we've got the top layer, duplicate that again. And we wanna kind of Select some of the middle parts so it looks quite interesting when you cut out and layer those three. Then to get the sizing just right, I'm going to look up the dimensions of a full-sized butterfly and then go over to our inch calculator, put in 1 6 scale and then we want to convert it to inches and it will give you the dimensions that you need to put into Cricut Design Space. So we do that at the very top here. So here we have our four butterflies and they are in the correct dimensions for 1 6 scale. Now we're going to make the frame that the butterflies will sit on. So go over to the shapes tab and we're going to create a square 
and I'm going to color that uh, sort of orangey color unlock the padlock there and then drag it over so that it fits the same height as our butterflies you have to send that one to the back and kind of stick the butterflies on top so that you can see the placement looks how you want it to look when you finish the final product you can also select your butterflies and, uh, and sort of align them so that they're lined up correctly and just visually scope how it's going to look on the final product. So this piece will be cut from cork sheet so I can actually stick some pins into the backing. So I'm going to duplicate that rectangle and just color it as sort of a light tan color. That will be my calico fabric piece but I'll come back to that later. I'm going to duplicate the rectangle again to create the backing which will be cut from wood. So I've made that a sort of brown color so that I know that Cricut places it on a separate mat and I need to cut that from wood. So let's make the tabs for our fabric and we use this so that we can fold it over the cork sheet. So I'm gonna unlock the padlock of a rectangle and then I'm really just creating a tab that is the same height as my calico piece. And they are about 0.3 inches in width and we're then going to duplicate that shape so we have four sides but it does need to be the same height as our rectangle and then we do the same for the the two top pieces they need to be the same width as our calico piece Make sure all of the pieces are touching that rectangle and then highlight everything and click weld and it will create one entire shape which we can then use to cover our cock sheet. Now we're going to make a frame so we need to duplicate our wood piece here and then we're going to make it a bit bigger than the frame itself because it's going to sit around the outside so just drag that over unlock the padlock so then you're happy with the thickness Remember Cricut sometimes has a difficulty with very thin cuts so you just want to be mindful of that as well. Highlight both, make sure that they are centered and then we can click the slice tool and we will slice the frame out of our wooden piece and you can see that it fits perfectly. And we're going to create some duplicates of that frame because we really want to get some depth in there and I want to be able to put a glass piece in between those wooden pieces as well. Then I'm going to drag over one of the wooden pieces and not covering all the way to the edge, but just covering it a little bit. We're going to unlock the aspect ratio and then drag that so it's a bit wider. And I'm coloring that blue because that's going to be our piece of acetate, which will imitate the glass. Because we're cutting so small, I've created duplicates of our butterflies so that you can kind of pick the best quality one. So doing a quick recap, we've got our black outline of the butterflies in black vinyl. We're also cutting some of the layers in colored vinyl. Then we have our colored cardstock. We have our fabric piece, which we're gonna cut from Calico. We have acetate, which is the blue piece. We have balsa wood for one of the frame pieces that will sit on the front and for the back and then we have chipboard pieces to fortify our cork and also the middle sections of frame and they are in grey and then we have our cork sheet piece and then later we're going to create a light brown cardstock for the outside. So we're going to start with the vinyl piece. I'm using HTV Bront. I will put a link in the description below and I'm using some fresh blades which are always best when you're cutting very intricate details. When cutting very intricate patterns out of vinyl I suggest using the washi setting with more pressure. This just helps with very intricate cuts because it runs a bit slower. And here are our butterflies cut out. And I'm using this Cricut vinyl in the kind of orange color and in green. I'm using balsa wood for the wood pieces and you will need the knife blade in order to cut it out. 
make sure your wood pieces are stuck down with some painters tape on all four edges. So for the piece that's going to hold the cork sheet and the frame pieces in between, I'm using heavy chipboard and you'll use the knife blade for this as well. For the butterflies and to bring some colour, I'm using just some regular coloured cardstock and the setting in design space is cardstock for intricate cuts and we use the fine point blade. We're using acetate to mimic glass. And here is the calico fabric of choice. Simply look for calico in the materials list in Cricut Design Space and you will need the fabric blade for this cut. Be sure to use the pink fabric grip mat for any fabric cuts that you're making. Here is my 2mm cork sheet which you can get from most craft stores and I use the heavy fabrics like burlap which uses the rotary blade. So let's put it all together. Here are our coloured cardstock pieces and our vinyl pieces. And to get all of the small little holes out of your butterfly vinyl, you can use a bit of painter's tape and see all of those little dots come up and then use some pointed tweezers to get rid of the other pieces. I've used sticky tape as transfer tape, just sticking that onto the cardstock. And very slowly and carefully peel it away because you don't want to tear the cardstock and you also don't want to tear your vinyl and then place that on top of the green vinyl. So you've got three layers there. And if you look up close, it's so intricate and detailed, really beautiful. And we're simply going to repeat this step for all of our butterfly shapes. Using some glue tape, I'm going to apply glue to our chipboard piece and then stick our cork sheet piece on top of that. So this just helps firm it up a little bit so it's not all wobbly. Then apply some glue tape onto the front of the cork sheet and we're going to put our calico fabric carefully on top. Using a fine tipped glue bottle, we're going to apply a very small amount of glue along the edges here and then fold the fabric inwards. It should look like this. Then we've got our wooden backing piece which I've applied some glue to and we're sticking that piece on top. Then I'm going to apply the chipboard in between there so that it is at the same level. Then I'm applying one of the frame wood pieces to the top and we're going to create some of these tiny tiny little tacks which we will use to stick our butterflies on. So with the pins, I recommend making a hole first before you stick them down. To get the precise placement, I would recommend gluing them before you stick the little pins in because the pins are really for decoration, they're not to hold it in place. You also want to make sure that the wings are bent a little bit so that it gives a three-dimensional effect. Once we've cut our pins down to size, we are going to stick them in the middle and you do need to kind of apply pressure with some tweezers and your finger to get them into place. You might need to bend them back into shape if they're flattened a little bit during the process. Once you're happy with the placement we're going to apply glue around the frame 
and then stick our acetate sheet on top of that. Make sure you don't apply too much glue because you don't want it seeping through. And then we're going to apply the frame pieces around the outside. Now I did cut them into four just to give it sort of a realistic look, um, but you can keep it as one frame sheet, it's just up to you. Then I'm using this light wood stain in order to colour the wood. It probably was a good idea to paint them separately, but it had already been assembled, so I was just very careful with a tiny paintbrush. I also then painted the back with the same wood stain. To cover our indiscretions, we need to measure the outside thickness of our frame and then we're going to pop those into Cricut Design Space and create a piece of cardstock that can go around the outside. So now we've cut out our strip for the outside, making sure the measurements are correct, apply some glue, and then glue that all around the outside to cover all of the layers. And here's our finished product. I think it looks amazing with the little pins inside, makes it look more authentic and sort of a museum antique look. Now let's make our miniature scarab beetle, which has a gold plaque underneath with the scientific name. So I did a little Google search of scarab beetles to start with to try and understand exactly what they look like. Some are sort of a blue shade and then some are in this kind of green shade, but either way they have a holographic look. So head on over to the images tab in Cricut Design Space and we're going to type the word beetle. And then I found one that fits the dimensions and shape of what we're trying to make. Now it doesn't matter if they have lines on them because we're just going to use the outline anyway. So I picked this one and then I've gone to the contour button and only select the background to give it just the outline of the beetle. To get the dimensions right, I've looked up the size dimensions of a scarab beetle and we can also see the scientific name that's listed there. Pop those dimensions into Cricut Design Space in your scale of choice and then pop that into the top of Cricut Design Space where the measurements are. Now let's make the frame. We're going to create a square under the Shapes tab and I'm going to resize it so that our beetle fits perfectly on top. And I'm going to colour it an orange colour and then just get a feel for how big that size is and change it. So we're going to create the fabric section. So just duplicate that square and we're going to recolor it so that Cricut places it on a separate cutting mat. And just like we did with our butterfly frame, we're going to create four edges for the sides, which will allow me to fold over our cork sheet. Once everything is touching, we're going to highlight all of it and then click weld, which will create one entire shape. Then I'm going to duplicate that square again. I'm going to recolor it into a brown wood color and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than our frame because this is the backing that will sit behind the cork sheet and the fabric. Now let's make our frame for the outside. So we need to duplicate the larger square, just drag that over, then highlight both and we're going to click slice, which will create that wooden frame. And just like the butterfly frame, we've got this square, which is going to be cut from chipboard, which will stabilize the cork sheet. I'm not using any acetate for this design. It will just be the beetle sitting on top, but you could follow the same steps as the butterfly tutorial if you wanted to create sort of that frame look with glass. Now let's make the plaque. So we create a rectangle shape, just resize it so that it sits underneath the beetle. Then I'm gonna color it yellow so that I know I wanna cut that from metallic cardstock. Then I've noted down the scientific name and I've typed that into Cricut Design Space by clicking the text button. I'm using Cricut Sans here because it's quite a thick font and um, it will cut nicely with the Cricut. So just resize the word so that it fits on top of your name plaque. And I've colored the beetle black as well as the words because I'm gonna cut both of them from vinyl. So in terms of our pieces, we have two names and two beetles from black vinyl. 
we have one beetle cut from black cardstock and that's to give the legs some three dimensions. We have our fabric and cork sheet as well as our balsa wood piece and chipboard. I've also used gold metallic cardstock for the name plaque. So let's gather all the materials we're going to need and cut everything out. So we're going to glue the chipboard to the cork piece. Then using a glue pen, just apply some glue and stick that onto the fabric. Using a fine tipped glue bottle, we're going to apply a very small amount of glue and then fold that fabric inwards. And then we're going to glue that piece onto our wooden piece at the back. Weave the vinyl for our beetle. And we're going to stick it where we think is best placed for our beetle. This is really to guide the placement. And then for our gold nameplate, I'm going to color the edges in this gold metallic marker so that you can't see the white showing through. And here's the name cut out of vinyl. I'm going to use a reverse weeding technique where you apply sticky tape to the whole vinyl piece, then flip it over, peel off the backing, and then peel off all the empty space that you're not going to use. This just makes it so much easier when you're dealing with letters that are very tiny. It makes sure that you don't miss anything. Then we're going to transfer that over and stick it onto our metal plate. Then apply a small amount of glue and stick that underneath your beetle template. And this time I've coloured the wooden pieces before I've stuck them on. Again, I separated the frame pieces just to give it a more rustic look, but this is totally up to you. I've applied the piece that sits around the frame to kind of hide those indiscretions. It's really important to measure this exactly. So for the 3D beetle, I'm using polymer clay in black and brown. I've got our spare vinyl beetle, which I'm sticking on here, which I can use then to kind of guide the placement. And it's important to warm the polymer clay up with your hands before you start using it. So break off a tiny piece for the head and we're just going to roll that between our fingers and then place that on the head area. You want it to be the same measurements. And then I'm using just a clay tool to soften the edges a little bit. Then we're going to do the abdomen of the beetle. So again, just roll a small piece and place that in there and then adhere that to the head so that they're joined. And then we're going to do the bottom piece. So we just need to measure out exactly how much we want. Initially I had a bit too much, so I did cut it down, um, but then molded it to the shape of the beetle. I'm using a pin to draw some of the details on. Um, with a line down the middle just to make it look really realistic. And this is what it looks like. We take it off that acrylic sheet, obviously. We're gonna bake it for the required time. And then I'm using this mica powder, which is quite translucent. You could also use kind of a greeny color, but it really depends on how you want your scarab to look. I also added a little bit of purple in there as well. I've used UV resin with the mica powder to give it a shine. Just make sure that that's mixed really well. And then I'm gonna carefully paint that on to our scarab beetle. Now you can be quite liberal with this mixture because I'm going to put it under a UV light. So just pop it under the UV light. Now check the instructions for your own UV resin, but this is what it should look like afterwards. I've used some adhesive foam dots to give the beetle a little bit of dimension in terms of the legs. So I popped that 
um, cut down to size on the body area, peeled that adhesive off, and then I've stuck the cardstock beetle over the top so the legs look like they're sticking out from the frame. Then apply some glue to that cardstock piece and we're going to glue our Fimo piece on top of that. For the very fine intricate details I've used black acrylic paint with a very very tiny thin paintbrush and then just very carefully painted on those details. And here's our finished product. Like I said, you could make it a frame with glass if you prefer, but I really liked the way that this turned out. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you love this tutorial. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already.